So the lecture today is going to be about cameras. And for this class, we can provide you with some high-end equipment, but to actually take it to the next level, like some of the cameras you're going to see, it's, it's just simply beyond our budget capabilities. So we're just going to have a general discussion about video cameras and maybe some advantages and disadvantages of each. So videographers have a huge variety of styles and manufacturers of cameras available to them. But we can kind of break them down into several categories. Okay, we have the digital cinema camera, the DSLR and mirrorless camera, camcorders, action cameras, 360 degree cameras, film cameras, and smartphones. So we're going to go ahead and start, well, we'll just go right down the list. And so the first one is the digital camera. Digital cinema camera? Camera. Digital cin cinema cameras are very, or tend to be, very high-end cameras. So these are what you would probably most likely see filming movies, commercials, other high-end stuff. Um, if you were to go to a, an advanced film school, they would probably also have cameras similar to that. So the Ari, um, which you see in both of these, is an outs. It's used, it's really high-end. And it's used specifically because it gives really good color rendition and has a huge dynamic range when recording. Another really popular one is called RED. This gives high resolution and high-end raw recording. Really high-quality camera. Here it is. It's all set up. And then the final one, well, no, we're actually going to cover two others, but um, for cinema-specific cameras, we also have the Blackmagic. Now, Blackmagic is an interesting camera set in that it provides pro quality at much more affordable prices. And this is one of their point-and-shoot size style, and you can see that this is actually a 6K camera. Um, it's not designed for stills, really. It's designed for video. This is their more traditional design. Also a 6K camera, but certainly has a lot more features than the, um, the other one did. Now, there is some really pro high-end camera equipment, um, such as the Canon. Um, Canon is a commercial grade. Um, it's used by TV stations, news, things like that. Um, but it is um, seeing itself replaced by the Sonys. For some reason, um, the Sonys are quietly, well, maybe not so quietly, taking over the, in, the industry. Um, probably because of the availability of lenses, um, and Sony's just a good name, super high quality, been around forever. So that brings us to DSLR and mirrorless. Now these, you, I'm sure most of you have used, you certainly used them in the photography class. They were originally purposed for stills. They're modeled after film cameras. Many are very, very capable of high-end video recording, popular for a lot of indie work and content creators because of the lower price and multi-purpose nature. And there was one case where an entire feature movie was filmed in one of the Disney parks without Disney even knowing it because they quietly used a DSLR camera, which went unnoticed. So for um, the 
brands that are probably the best to be using in this category, okay, um, or the most popular, you will see that Nikons aren't necessarily listed because that's not really their strength. Um, that's not an industry that Nikon has spent a lot of time in. Um, they are really not focused on video at all. So we have the Canon EOS series. It's popular for stills. Um, and they really, really, uh, most photographer, well, a lot of photographers like it because of uh, the Canon color science behind it. Now, the reason that we use Nikons on campus is because it was originally about still photography and because the Nikons are just a much more sturdy camera than the Canons. And that's really one of the big reasons we did. Um, all of the, um, the photographers that I saw during the war out in the field were using Nikons, not Canons, um, because of the durability of the actual cameras. The next is the Sony Alpha series. Um, Sony's, as far as the DSLR and single lens, or er, um, not single lens reflex, mirrorless, that's what I was looking for, um, are fairly popular. This happens to be a mirrorless version. Um, this camera is actually purpose built for video, um, and it is a full frame camera. Full frame means that it meets the requirements and has the size of um, CMOS that can take, is equivalent to a 35 millimeter um, film. <laughs> but with Sony, really sharp video, great low light capability, and um, really a lot of time spent developing um, the CMOS in them. This is also an alpha, um, but this is the DSLR version. Um, very, very, um, well, we're jumping up into the thousands as far as a DSLR is concerned. Um, but they're considered professional cameras, and Sony's been creeping up on the Canons and the Nikons of the world with their alpha series, just because of the quality. We have the Panasonic Lumix series. Um, Panasonic is extensively used in the video industry. Um, we don't see it a lot in still photography so much, um, but it is very, very popular in video. This is one of their setups, set up with a rig and ready to do some videoing. And so um, the proper name is the Panasonic AG series. So now we're going to go to camcorders. Now camcorders have been around since videotape, um, ever since film started to be replaced. It's used in everything from home video to content to pro broadcast. Tendency to have a really um, really good long zoom capability, easy to use, long battery life, and has built-in microphones. So we'll start with the Sony's in this case. Um, this is a Sony Handycam. Um, it looks just like the ones that had videotape um, associated with them. It's just they're a lot smaller. The slightly larger Sony Handycam um, you might actually see this one being used by the news media as well because of its portability um, and capability. Um, now we get in the Panasonics. Um, like I said before, the Panasonic is, is used extensively in video, um, although not so much in still. Also a Panasonic, um, a little bit more like the Sony was. Um, of course, we have Canon examples of these things. Um, this is the Canon example. So 
So before I go any further on that, actually, let's talk about um, online in Amazon and all over the place, you're going to find a ton of really, really inexpensive, what seems to be very capable um, handy cams. You get what you pay for. Um, the quality of the video is not what you're going to get with the companies that have been at it for a long time. And a lot of the, um, a lot of the science that's built into them, which would include the lenses, um, the microphone capabilities, um, and the, um, the CMOS or the, the sensor that's actually recording the video, um, are all going to be much, much more capable in the higher end camcorders than you're going to find on that $150 camcorder that you buy on Amazon. Action cameras, um, relatively new category, if you want to call it relatively new, um, probably really kind of came into being, I don't know, about 15 to 20 years ago. So it's, it's not really, it hasn't really been around for a super long time. Um, but the action camera. So of course we have the GoPro Hero series. Um, this happens to be an 11 black um, very, um, they've come a long way in the last 15 years or so that GoPros have been around. Um, very um, capable, very, very durable camera. They're rugged, they're waterproof, they're designed for point of view filming, okay, which is kind of a, a key thing that none of the other cameras are really, really purpose built for a point of view um, video. Great for sports, great for reality and adventure filmmaking. Another um, major player in that market that we have is the DJI, the same people who make the drones that we use. Um, they make a very good, durable um, action camera. It's called the Osmo Action. Now we're gonna come to 360 degree cameras. Um, now these are designed to capture a full 360 degree view of the environment that they're in, hence the name. Virtual reality, augmented reality, immersive video and interactive media are all things that a 360 degree camera are designed for. So the first one in this category is the Insta360, okay? Um, it's, that's the name of the company, it's Insta360. And they have several different versions. Um, this is almost like a point of view version um, with an adapter, depending upon how big you need it to be. We have the Samsung gear, which is not really designed for point of view or total mobility um, because it, it is mounted, because that's the best way for this one to operate. Samsung Gear 360. Um, here we come with the Lumix. So this is a Panasonic 360 degree camera without a lens on it. The Matterport is really designed um, as a relatively stationary, um, almost like still photography where it's actually taking in the whole 3D environment. Um, these are used extensively in real estate um, for giving you the ability to walk through a house um, online. So more of a virtual reality kind of camera. And certainly there are custom cameras that are purpose built entirely for virtual reality and 360 degree. So um, this is a... Um, cinema quality 360 degree camera setup. Film cameras. Yes, they still use film cameras, just like they still use film in some still photography. 
So you know, there's always going to be a pushback on technology, um, a group, kind of what we would call an authentic group um, that want the feel. They want the, the film grain. They want the color richness and other analog qualities that we get from film that we really don't get any other way. The Ari, um, this is an Ari 35 millimeter. Um, that's one of the um, standard sizes for film, um, video film, um, just like it is for still photography. And you may or may not have heard of the term 35 millimeter slides or 35 millimeter film, but that's what they use in still photography. And that's what is considered a full frame. Um, and so we saw that Ari also makes digital ones totally makes sense. This one is an Ari, but it is a 16 millimeter version. Um, and so it's a little bit smaller, a lot more portable, um, but it's about half the size as far as the film's concerned. So you're not going to get the detail that you get with the 35 millimeter Aries. Smartphones. Yes, yeah, smartphones have kind of changed the whole game, especially in the last five years or so. So when you need it quick, but you need quality, some smartphones can actually fill that gap, but not all smartphones are created equal. All right. Some, only some, have the quality and features needed for cinema, um, such as 4K, capability at 60 frames. Um, now remember, this is very, very memory intensive. So you're going to use, if you decide to turn on a cinema quality smartphone and start recording, you are filling up your memory very, very quickly. Um, and that's one of the reasons they continue to add a lot more memory to smartphones is um, so that video is simpler to do on a smartphone. Music too, but it's it's also about video. So of course we have the Apple iPhones. Um, when you're talking about cinema, though, you want one of the pro capable models. Those are the ones that have all of the lidar and have all of the different kinds of lenses, depending upon how it happens to be shooting. We have the Google Pixel. Um, again, you'll notice it has a full series of lenses, lidar. Um, and again, it's a Pixel, but it's a Pixel Pro. Now for Sony, there's the Xperia, um, has super high quality Zeiss lens, and you can see there's an extensive lens array on the back of this as well. But the Sony Xperia series, OnePlus, um, this is using the same lenses that we have on our high-end drone. Um, the OnePlus Pro series, very, very capable, as long as it's a Pro series. And then the Samsung Galaxy. Um, this one happens to be an Ultra. Um, you can generally tell cinema quality based on how many lenses and sensors happen to be on the back of the camera. Now, smartphones have really, really gained some real ground for filmmaking. Um, and they are actually filming entire movies now on smartphones. Um, the first one that was technically done all on a smartphone is, um, this happens to be the set of 28 Years Later, um, which is coming out soon, um, was actually done entirely using smartphones. And with um, Apple's technology, um, using Final Cut Camera, which is um, a, an iOS application, we've come into a whole new world where a, one person can have an iPad and be f fed from multiple iPhone feeds into Final Cut Pro all at the same time. I believe it can support an 
up to eight cameras. Um, so you could have iPhone camera folks out there or different angles all feeding one iPad and Final Cut camera. World is changing. And so there you go. There's your quick rundown on cameras. Um, be sure you kind of, while you, this is all fresh in your memory, you go ahead and take that quiz.